Amen. There are some key words in that text of scripture. Media, please help us with the text again. It says, let us have what? Confidence. Then, and approach God's throne. I think that's good news. Where there is grace, there we will receive mercy and find grace to help us just when we do what we need it. I think um, it's King James might use the other word. Let us approach him with boldness boldness yeah it says King James says since we have a high priest let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of words need. It's important we understand the words, the key words in that text of scripture. The first word in there I'd like us to look at is the word boldly. And it comes from a Greek word known as parasia which has to do with freedom of speech, your ability to express yourself. It shows a person who speaks his mind and who does it straightforwardly and with great words, confidence. There are some people, when they want to talk to you, they look at you eyeball to eyeball and they will tell you what they want to tell you. I don't know if you have encountered somebody like that. And when they finish it, they don't care whatever you're going to do. And it also depicts frankness. The person will be frank. Hey, Father, this thing you did is not good. And he's telling you, he's telling you to your face without missing words. And he or she is frank. And he is bold. It was this kind of frankness most times is met with some kind of resistance especially in the Old Testament in the New Testament and then it brings also resistance opposition and hostility people who are frank most times are hated by people who will tell you you are wrong most people don't like them and they will not want to do anything with them that is what is expected of us when we stand in prayer before the Lord. You've got to be what? Frank. The question will be, why do you have to be frank? Well, we'll get back to that. And then it now talks about the word obtain. That again comes from a Greek word, lambano. The Greek word lambano, which means to seize. Or to lay hold of something in order to make it your own, your very own. Something that is not your own. You see somebody will come and collect the thing from you. He will seize it. And when you talk, he might even beat you on top. He says he collects it and makes it his own words, his own. It means somebody to reach out for something in order to get it. To grab, to capture or to take possession of something. In some cases, it is taken violently by the person and lays hold of something in order to seize or take it over as his own. It also shows, sometimes in some other instances, it shows a person who gently and graciously receive something that is freely and easily given 
Somebody can give you something graciously without force, either because of your behavior or the way you handled it. And then he gives that to give it to you. And then there's another word there that is the text uses, or the author of that text of scripture uses. He uses the word find, so that you might find grace when you do what you know it. And it has a, a root word also known as eri, erika, erika or erisko, which means to find. Probably you've been looking for something and finally you found it. It gives you what? Joy. Such that you can now say, oh, I found it. Oh, I got it. Ah, Maybe you've been trying something and as you try, you did not succeed. And probably you tried this last time. Maybe these people who do Naira bet, the last time you bet, you've been betting and betting, you're not getting. Then you try the last time. That was this, the last card you have. And as you got, did it, you got it. And you say, yeah, I have it. Exclamation. And so in that point, he says, you can say, ah, Erika, I got it. Praise the Lord. Amen. But remember the root that leads you to that point. Boldly. You have to approach boldly. Now, why would you approach a thing boldly? You can only approach somebody boldly because you know him. Probably you're asking somebody for financial help. You can boldly walk up to him and say, Ah, brother, sister. I need this money because you know that he or she has it. If you, are, if you don't have that kind of confidence, you will not be able to go, go. And then you might also know somebody who has it, but you lack confidence, you lack boldness. What happens? You will not get it. So here, taking the background circumstance of that text, it says... Let us go to our great high priests. Not just a high priest, but what? Great what? High priest. The high priest is great. The high priest is sympathetic. Amen. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. No. We have a high priest who can be touched by our problems, by our troubles, because he has been through what we are experiencing. Are you homeless? Ask your neighbor, are you homeless? What did the person answer? No. But if you are homeless, the high priest you have has been homeless. He was homeless. Remember, at the point of the birth of Jesus, when they got to Bethlehem, any hotel they entered, there was no room for him, for Mary and the, who? Joseph. Any hotel they went to, they said everywhere was fully what? Booked. And finally, they stepped out in the cold, only to find a place with the animals. So are you homeless? Your high priest has been what? Homeless. Are you suffering cold and loneliness? Your high priest went through it. Because when he was delivered. And Herod was after his head to kill him. What happened? An angel instructed and said. Take that child away. Because Herod is out to kill him. And so in the cold of the night, in the middle of the night, Joseph bonded Mary on a donkey or a horse. Off, they ran away to where? Egypt. Are you an immigrant? Are you a refugee? Your high priest was once a refugee in a foreign world, land. Are you lost in thought? Have you lacked financial assistance? Your high priest was once that way. Have you been shamed and disgraced? Your high priest has been through that route. 
Have you been treated unjustly? Your high priest was treated what? Unjustly. Have you been rejected by parents, brothers and sisters? And you feel you are lonely in the world. The high, your high priest had been treated that way. He went to his own people. His own people did not do what? Accept him. But for those who did accept him, he gave them power to become sons and daughters of what? God. He went to Nazareth on the Sabbath day and stood in the synagogue to teach. They handed in the scroll of the book and he opened to the chapter of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 following that says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captive, to restore sight to the blind, the downtrodden, to declare a year of what? Favor. And when he finished speaking, he told his people, This text of scripture is being fulfilled today even as you what? Listen. And then they looked at him. They said, you, the poor carpenter's son, how did you come about this power that you are trying to exercise? And the next thing, they dragged him. They were dragging him out of the synagogue to stone him or throw him down the cliff so that he would die and perish. Praise the Lord. In his own people. And then he said to them, a prophet is not even accepted in his own world, in his own land. And he walked away. And scripture says he never walked many miracles there. Just healed a few persons because they did not believe in him. They doubted his power. They said to him, perform for us those things we have heard that you did in Capernaum. We want to see it there. He looked at them, you men of little world, faith. So, friend, are you rejected? Has your mother who adopted you or your father who adopted you said, no, I don't know you again, I don't want you. And you are at the verge of hanging yourself. Remember, your high priest has been treated that way. Amen? Are you condemned together with criminals even when you are innocent? He was crucified between two words. Can I hear you? Between two words. And robbers. At the point where he was to be released by Pilate, what did Pilate do? Pilate, instead of releasing him freely, went to inquire from the people. And the people said, the people said what? They said what? We prefer what? Release, release Barabbas. Release Barabbas for us. And Pilate became afraid and released a criminal in place of Jesus. And then Jesus was led to the cross so what about you have you been accused unjustly and you feel that ah, the high priest you have been through every stage of them that's why he says we have a high priest who feels what we feel he was born into a poor family and yet he stayed there the God of gods the Lord of lords he stayed in a house that had nobody so that's why it says whatever condition you find yourself turn to him he will understand. Praise the Lord. He says don't lose hope. Turn to him. We have a high priest who is sympathetic. If you turn to him then you will receive an answer. Now, my dear friends, in the Old Testament Moses' brother Aaron served as the high priest together with his children and other priests who were assigned to go to the temple of God to minister. In the book of Leviticus, I think chapter 10 or thereabouts, it states it very clearly, the instructions, and they were to follow everything as prescribed by the law of God. They were not to miss anything. If they do, eventually they will suffer. In fact, they will die. The two sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, who offered a strange fire to the Lord, had to suffer because of it. They were killed by the Lord because they did not follow the order. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
And so in the Old Testament, the high priest then had a systematic way of going. And when he goes into the sanctuary, everybody was just agitated, wondering what happens. And the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies once a year to offer the sacrifice of atonement for the people. And while he goes in there, everybody will carry his hand on the mouth. Because if the high priest goes in there and does not come out, it means God has struck him dead inside there. And the people will be in trouble because their sins have not been forgiven. So, he goes in there once in a while, once in a year, and he comes out. But in the New Testament, in the new dispensation that we are being encouraged today to approach him, the high priest that we have is a high priest that has entered into the presence of what? God. And he stands there day in, day out. And he entered with the blood, with his own blood, into the Holy of Holies. In fact, he entered the highest heaven because then the Israelites or the Jewish people considered the heavens, they considered the sky. Then they considered the stars as the heaven and then they considered the throne of God where Jesus became the high priest who sits on that throne. That's why he says, boldly walk into his presence. Now, child of God, what is it that is bothering you? What is that problem that you are afraid of? He says, go to his presence, what? With boldness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is a call to prayer. Because the only thing that enables us to go into the presence of God or the vehicle with which we go into the presence of God is through what? Prayer. And that prayer, when you go, it becomes our spiritual instrument to at, go to the throne of God's mercy. Now, first of all, when you go into that presence of God, to the throne of God's mercy, the first thing you ask for is what? Can I hear you? Is what? Mercy. The book of Hebrews says it. Mithia, please come back to that text of scripture. The first thing is mercy. Seeing that then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our word, profession. No matter the circumstance if you find yourself, do not lose your profession of faith in him. For we have not a high priest which cannot, touch, cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without words, sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of what? Grace. That we may obtain what? Tell it to your neighbor that you might obtain mercy. Tell it to someone again that you might obtain mercy. And what is mercy? Mercy is receiving what we did not merit. We are, by the justice of God, we are condemned. But he shows it to us. And then the second one, when you have obtained mercy, mercy opens the door for grace. Mercy opens the door for what? And when he opens the door for grace, then what is grace? Receiving what? What you did not want. Merit. Unmerited favor. Unmerited kindness. But this grace has been merited for you by your what? High priest. Through his death on the cross. I don't know. Are you getting the picture? Are you getting the picture? Do you believe it? Are you sure? 
Some of us don't believe it. Some of us cry. Hi, my sin, oh, my sin. I've committed so much sin. He says, go to him boldly. You will never be refused. You will never be what? He will never refuse you if you go with boldness. Now, in going with boldness, sometimes you don't need to be gentle. You don't need to be what? Because in the explanation of those words, mercy, to obtain mercy, it says, you seize it by force. You capture. Have you stolen before? Have you stolen before? Ask your neighbor, have you stolen before? Eh? Ask somebody, have you stolen before? What did the person say? No. You've not stolen. Today I want to tell you to steal. This night you will steal. You don't want to steal. This night you will do what? You will steal. Somebody stole in the scripture. Somebody stole mercy and grace in the scripture. The thief by the side of Jesus in the scripture did what? He stole grace. He stole mercy. He stole heaven. While the other person was busy abusing Jesus. What is, he said, my friend, shut up. Shut up. What you got, you merited. But for both of us, we are supposed to do what? We are supposed to be killed. This man has done nothing. As soon as he finished rebuking that man, he turned to Jesus and he said, Oga, today, remember me when you go to your kingdom. What did he get? He got both mercy and what? Grace. He took it violently. You don't need to negotiate at this point. He was violent with his rebuke of his colleague who had stolen. When you are in desperate situation, there are certain circumstances in life that you don't need to negotiate with the devil. You don't need to negotiate with your accuser. Because he says the accuser of the brethren has been what? Thrown down. And we have defeated him by the blood of the word of the Lamb. The devil comes daily to accuse us. Of course, you know that the devil goes to church. Eh? Praise the Lord. Can I tell you something this morning? Sorry, this evening. Is the devil afraid of God? Eh? Is the devil afraid of God? Yes. See you. Is the devil afraid of the presence of God? Yes. Eh? Is he afraid of the presence of God? Yes. Praise the Lord. The devil is not afraid of the presence of God. Though. Are you surprised to hear that? I will explain. Go to the book of Job chapter 1. He said the children of God gathered and the devil did what? Eh? Please media help us. The children of God gathered. There was an there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and eschewed what? Evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three what? Daughters. His Substance also was 7,000 sheep. Please go to where he appeared before uh, when they gathered. Go to where they gathered. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh, go to, start from 6 please. So now some of us will know what we are doing. Now, there was a day, can I hear somebody say that there was a what? One day, devil will come to tempt you even in the house of God. 
Now there was a day when the sons of God did what? Came to present themselves before the Lord. Praise the Lord. Child of God, look at somebody by your side. If you tap the person, tell him, wake up. And look up. So that some of us will stop deceiving ourselves. Tell the person, open your eyes. So that you will not say, the devil, the devil. He said, they came to present what? Read it with me. They came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Is Satan in this church? Even when you have decreed the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, he will see find his way and do what? And enter. He came be, he also to present himself. They came to present themselves. He came to do what? Present himself. And the Lord God said unto Satan, Are you hearing now? Where was this dialogue taking place? In the presence of what? God. Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro the earth, from walking up and what? Down in it, looking for somebody to do what? Tempt and catch. And the Lord said to him, Unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Is he trouble? Are you seeing trouble? You see how God is exposing Job. Did you notice my servant, eh? Job? And he said, Yes. Ah, I saw that man. He's a very holy man. He's a very good. Uh -huh. Why won't he be holy? Why won't he be in that way? When you have surrounded him with everything of life. You bless him with children. You bless him with this. You bless him with that. He said, okay, just allow me. Let me tempt him small and see whether he will not cause you to your feet. Can you imagine trouble? Praise the Lord. Where was all this dialogue taking place? In the presence of what? Amen. Amen. And what happened? God said, I give you permission. Go and tempt him. Child of God, be careful. God gave him what? He appeared before the presence of God. And God gave him permission and he jumped up. He jumped, Erika, ha, I've gotten it today. And he started going. Job, now you, I go deal with you. He struck the children, boy. He was eating him left and right. When he finished that one, Job was suffering from the pain of that one. He came back to God again a second time. And God said, where have you been? I've been all about the Hey, what about Job? Yes, now I've dealt with him, but he see something is remaining. Strike him with sickness and see whether he will not cause you. God said, go and strike him. But don't kill him. Praise the Lord. Child of God, you need to be weary. That is why you come to church, somebody will steal your phone. You leave your bag before you turn. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. By the time you recover yourself, your bag has what? That time when you declare fire, 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 everybody, fire, fire, eh? You go from one place, do it in, disappear. Amen. Amen. Child of God, when you think you are high in the spirit, you are operating in the level of anointing, eh? the devil will come. God has a pray, 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 finish, waiting to happen. He will come that time. Let us look at Luke's gospel chapter 4 or Matthew's gospel chapter 4. The scene of the fast and temptation of Jesus. Amen. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Praise the Lord. Did you get the, 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 the opening sentence? Jesus was led 
into the world. Jesus is God personified in human form. And he decided to pray to commune with the Father and the devil showed up. Then Jesus was led. After fasting 40 days and 40 what? He was what? And what happened? The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become what? Child of God, what did they happen here? Amen. You don't they where you they do fasting as you they fast. They hunger to commit sin, they hungry you. It don't happen to you before. No, answer now. I'm not gonna answer me, church people. It don't happen. You they fast too, but to co commit sin, they hungry you. You they say I'm that is why somebody will come to church while in church is thinking of evil. Like as we are gathered here, some people will go to the hall and maybe the young man will be fondling the girl's breasts up there in the hall for church. You dress up from your house. The place you feel you can come to commit sin is in the world, in the church. Or a child goes to the toilet to go and urinate. One man will look at the child and when he gets there, will grab the child and wants to rape the child in the toilet in the church. The devil follows us to where even the presence of God Amen. And when that one, Jesus rebuked him, he went again and he took him to a high mountain. He said, if you look at, I can make you the king of the universe. If only you will do what? Worship me. And the Lord said, you shall worship the Lord your what? God. And then the other one, he took him again to somewhere and said, look at this high jump. And he quoted the Bible for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus was yet vibrating in the spirit of the fasting of 40 days and fighting night. 40 nights. The devil was busy doing. If that could happen to Jesus, who are you? Who are you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, dear friends, the devil is not afraid of the presence of God, but there's one thing he's afraid of. He's afraid of what the Holy Spirit does with you. That is the only thing that he is afraid of. He's not afraid of coming into the presence of God. But he's afraid of the Holy Spirit imparting on you to instill obedience. To instill humility. To instill joy and happiness in you. To instill holiness in you. And then to instill boldness, courage. To be able to walk into the presence of God. So that you can realize the enormity of power and glory God has deposited in you. In order that you might stand to say, get behind me what? Satan. And these can only be acquired when you are able to go boldly into the presence of God. Now, you must make the accuser, the devil, realize that yes, he can accuse you. But you have a precursor. And that is Jesus, the high priest, who has gone ahead and won the merit for you without your own qualification. And so in such moments, you address him with the qualification of the, the, your great high priest, Jesus. Remind him, he has gone ahead of me with his blood. And so I can boldly go in there. Child of God, in approaching the throne of grace, you've got to be bold. You've got to be aggressive. If it means to seize it by force, the word of God says the kingdom of God suffered violent, the violent take it by what? By force. The Lord says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be what? Added unto you. And he says unto us in Matthew's gospel chapter 7, he says, knock and do what knock if it is possible break the door 
so that you can do what? Go in. When you break the door, nobody will query you because your high priest has already paid the price. But many of us do not know this. Amen. In any circumstance you find yourself, remember this day, the throne of grace is a strategy for effective what? Prayer. Media, you can help us. Let's look at Matthew's Gospel chapter 7. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. Go to verse 8 of it. Okay, go back to verse 6, from verse 6. All right, verse 7. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the strategy of effective prayer. When you get to the presence of all that you should walk to the throne of grace. It says, ask and it will be what? Seek and you will what? Did we find that in our text this evening? He said, so that walk boldly so that you may obtain what? grace that you need. So seek and you will do what? Find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. That is the strategy. For everyone who acts does what? Can I hear this church say that? For everyone who asks always what? Why? Your high priest is on the throne of grace. He has gone there. He is sitting there. When you act, you do what? You receive. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be what? Open. If the door refuses to open, break it. You do what? You have been given the tool and the power to do what? Break the door. And nobody will query you. Divine justice will protect you. Because the blood is speaking for you at the throne of grace. Can I hear somebody say amen? Yeah. I'd like us to look at again Luke's Gospel chapter 11. Luke's Gospel chapter 11. Go to verse 5. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. That's what Jesus said. Suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already what? Locked. And my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Praise the Lord. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give, it, give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity. Can I hear somebody use that word? Audacity. Audacity means boldness to seize. And to give him restlessness through that night until he comes out to do what? Irrespective of the rebuke that he might come out and pour abuses on you. You don't care. The audacity of faith will make you to continue to not. He will surely get up and give you as much as you want you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be what? Given to you. Seek and you will what? Find. Knock and the door will be what? Open to you. If the door is not opened gently, you break it through your what? Perseverance. For everyone who asks, receives. 
The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be what? Opened. Child of God, tell yourself, I have the authority to open every door. You have authority to pray your way into the place of treasure. It doesn't matter who has locked up your treasure. Tonight, on this second day of, December, of September, you will tell him to open the door because you have the audacity of faith to open that door in the name of Jesus. It's been given to you. Not because you merit it. Get that. But because of what? Mercy and what? Grace. Mercy and what? Grace. Mercy given to you free of charge. Instead of divine justice nailing you, divine justice sets you free. Can somebody say, I am free? I am free. Amen. 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 Please, can you still give us Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, from verse 1 to 8? So that we can pray small and conclude for today. Amen. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you sure? Amen. Jesus, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not do what? Give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. This is a strategy of prayer, effective prayer. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, with the plea, grant me justice against my adversaries. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, this widow keeps what? Keeps bothering me. I will see that she gets justice. So that she won't eventually come and attack what? Me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can worry somebody to hypertension. And the person will have stroke and do what? And die. That's what this man said. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? You've been chosen by the merit of what? Mercy and what? Grace. Who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? The answer is what? No. I tell you, he will see that they get justice. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. And quickly also, can somebody say amen? Yeah. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So, child of God, do you have the faith? And the faith that has audacity to approach the throne of grace. Amen. Through effective prayer and confidence to the throne of grace, your disgrace and shame will come to an end. Amen. In First Samuel chapter 1, following Hannah was disgraced. Hannah was being teased. They made caricature of her because she was childless. Amen. She had been going to Shiloh year in year out, year in, year out and praying gentle prayer when she goes, she comes back the next year she's not pregnant the other wife of Eli continue to make jests of her, sorry of Ekana, continue to make jests of, of her, look at you, childless Otonaka dear Otonaka gini that was what the name they were calling her until one day they went to Shiloh 
They ate and they drank. And every other thing was done. Hannah got up from her seat and left for the throne of grace. She came to the sanctuary of God and knelt down and stormed heaven. And she said to God, Today, now waiting, today. Today, I refuse a no for an answer. All I want is a yes. And all I want is a word, a child. She began to storm heaven. She went boldly into the holy of holies of God and spoke to God in the language that he will understand. God will not rebuke you when you are frank. God will only correct you if your intention is not well directed. But he will not rebuke you. That is why the root word of boldness tells you somebody who is frank, someone who is straightforward. Hannah took God to the, in the battle and said, this year you must give me a child. I don't care how you are going to do it, but all I want is a child. All I want is a child. Today, this year, I don't want a holy water from the altar. This year, I don't want anointing oil from the altar, but all I want is a child. A child born from my womb. And I bet you, God, if you give me this child, I will give him back to you. I challenge you. I speak back your word and your promise to you. Child of God, I don't know what you are going through. Is it the healing you want from God? Is this sickness that you want God to heal? Is it because of somebody you want to tell the Lord Jesus, I want you to heal that my brother in Lagos. God will heal that person for you. Take him by his words. Take him by his promises. You do not need to be shy about it when you speak. Hannah was not shy. Hannah poured out her heart such that when the priest early came and saw her, he said, young woman, stop behaving like a drunk in this place. She said, look, priest of God, don't mind your business. I am telling God the way it is in my heart. My heart is broken and I want God to heal it and God healed her. Child of God, I speak to somebody. When you speak to the Lord that way, he will heal you. He will answer you. He will break that yoke upon your life. You will obtain mercy and grace from his throne of grace in the name of Jesus. After our healing school, somebody sent me a text message. The person has twins and one of them was sick. She said she joined our program for the five days that we had it. That the last day when I talked about the invalid and the sick, she joined in the prayer, and after the prayer, the child got well. She, was, she never attended, but from a distance, God healed her. Because the God is alive. Yesterday, after evening mass, a lady, a lady walked up to me behind the sacristy, and she said, Father, I have the testimony to give that during the healing school, for some time, she has been having problem with her menstrual problem, menstrual cycle. The blood does not flow. But after the healing school, she began to bleed. She began to see her menses again. Child of God, there is mercy and grace before the throne of God. But do you have the corresponding faith to go deeper to obtain it? Jesus said to Peter, pull your boat into the deeper water. He did. And he caught fish that astounded Peter that he began to shout, Jesus of Nazareth, leave me alone. I'm a sinful man. The Lord said, no, I will not leave you. Today, from today, you begin to catch men. Child of God, that is the throne of mercy and grace. There you will find it. But do you have the courage to go there? Can I see you get up? There is power mighty in thy blood. There is power mighty in thy blood. There is power mighty in the blood of. 
Jesus Christ, the Aries power and might in the there is power and might. There is power and might in the blood. Child of God, exalt the blood of Jesus right now. There is power and might in the blood. There is power and might in the blood of Jesus Christ, there is power in the blood. Just so did there, child of God. I think in that song says, There is power and might, not there is power and mighty. There is power and might in the blood. Once more, whoa. There is power and in the blood. Can I see you lift up your hand to the blood of power in the blood of there Jesus? Is power. I don't know that stuff that is holding you in back. The blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power and in the blood. That is what we walk into the presence of God with. There is power and might in the blood. of Jesus Christ there is power 